Hi, we're out on a range today, not our range, but a range, and we have a long since dead horse, but we're gonna beat it some more today. And what I'm talking about is, today we're discussing my technique for shooting my Stoger Uplander side-by-side double-barreled 20 gauge with internal hammers. Now, bear with the tedious backstory, but if I don't tell you this, a lot of what we do today won't make any sense. A while ago, I did a presentation on the water resistance of paper shot shells, and the demonstration gun I used was a Rossi coach gun, 12 gauge double barrel side by side with exposed hammers. And that led to a lot of questions about my technique for shooting a double barreled shotgun, which led to a presentation on my technique for shooting double barreled shotgun with exposed hammers. And that led to a lot of questions and commentary, especially a lot of commentary from the actually people, and more on them in a minute. And they were telling me that I was doing it wrong, which created the need for a part two presentation on my technique for shooting a side-by-side -side double barrel with exposed hammers. And that led to a lot of questions about what would be my technique for shooting a side-by-side -side double with internal hammers. And so here we are. Now this comes with four very important but rather tedious caveats, disclaimers, and yabbits. The first one being that this shotgun has what we call internal hammers. If you were to take it apart, you would see a very rudimentary looking set of hammers inside it. However, when these internal hammered guns were first becoming popular around 1910, 1900, somewhere back in there, they've been around for a long time, it was common to call them hammerless. Now, everybody knew that they had hammers. Hammerless just meant that they were internal. And that was the term that everybody used for many decades. Even when I was a really little kid in the 1970s, and I got my first double-barreled side-by-side internal hammered shotgun, that was still the term we were using, was hammerless. And somehow, everybody knew that that meant, of course it has hammers, they're just internal. But in the last few years, the actually people who want to correct everyone's verbiage have said things like, well, actually it's not hammerless. It has hammers, they're just internal. Yes, I know that. Everyone knows that. And we know, of course, that correlation can show a relationship and sometimes the strength of that relationship, but correlation does not show causation. But we know that there's a really strong relationship between wanting to use the word actually all the time and that really annoying voice. And quite often when I read comments like that, that's the voice in which I read them. So today, if I refer to this as hammerless, that's a colloquialism. I know that it has hammers, they're just internal. Okay, the second thing that we have to remember about double-barreled shotguns in general is that they do not all work exactly the same. They can vary a great deal. And in talking about my coach gun technique, there was a lot of comments from people who were telling me, actually, you're doing that wrong. And they suggested what I should be doing. And their suggestions were often things that weren't feasible. My gun doesn't work that way. You have to understand that double-barreled shotguns, depending on what make and model and when they were made, can work significantly differently from each other. Now, one thing that comes up is, when you open this after you've fired it, some people think that all shotguns have auto ejectors. No, the great majority of moderate quality, side-by-side, double-barreled hunting guns do not have auto ejectors. You have to pull the shells out yourself. Okay, oh, and that brings up a side note. Now, this is something I did not anticipate, was a lot of people took great umbrage to me pulling the shells out and just dropping them on the ground. Sometimes you need to reload quickly. You can't be fumbling with putting shells back in your pocket. You gotta reload. And then you police up your casings later. And a lot of people were very offended and worked up about just dropping those shells on the ground. And Oh, I'm littering. We police the range when we're done. But the really ironic thing, or at least one of the ironics, about this is when I shoot auto-loading shotguns or pump-action shotguns, those K 
casings are all going onto the ground. And no one seems to be bothered by that. It's only when they see me drop them when reloading a double barrel. Go figure. But getting back to how these guns work. Side-by-side -side double with double triggers. On this gun, the front trigger works the right barrel. The rear trigger works the left barrel. The mnemonic device is you're right out front or you're left behind. And I can tell you that every side-by-side, double-barreled, double-triggered shotgun I have ever seen, and we're talking about stuff made in the 1880s, stuff made in the 2020s, every one I have ever seen works this way, right out front or left behind. But there is no way I would stand here and tell you that they all work that way. I am certain that somewhere in the commentary, someone is going to tell me that their aunt had a grandma who knew a guy that had one that worked the opposite of that. You can't assume that they all work the same way. Now, this gun has a safety mounted right here, and most of them do. And forward is fire. But if I open the action, it re-engages the safety for me. So every time I reload, it re-engages the safety. So I have to take the safety off for myself. Every side-by-side, double-barreled, hammerless shotgun I have ever seen works this way. Until about a month ago, I bought one that was brand new that doesn't. Open it, and it does not re-engage the safety for you. Guns sometimes work a little differently. And you can't assume that they all work the same. And you certainly can't assume that mine works the same way yours does. Okay. Now, another very important caveat here is that nothing I say today should be in any way inferred as a tutorial. I am not trying to tell you how you should work your shotgun. I'm only demonstrating how I work this particular Stoger Uplander 20 gauge shotgun. Okay, with all of that, let's shoot something. Okay, first let's talk about loading the shotgun, and remember we're talking about a hammerless shotgun. Now the first thing I'm going to do is ensure that my safety is in the safe position. The second thing I'm going to do is push the action lever to the right, and the barrels will fall to the open position. Now watch how they do this. The importance of it will be seen in just a moment. See how they kind of fall open like that? Now I'm going to grab one shell, and I'm going to load it in the shotgun, then grab another and load it into the other barrel. You notice I do that without looking at it. You have to keep your eyes down range and see what's going on, not looking at your shotgun. And I'll explain that in more detail in just a moment. Now, when I shoot the shotgun, I'm typically going to pull the front trigger, then the rear trigger. And most of the time, not with all shotguns, but most of the time, your right barrel has less choke than your left barrel does. With full-length hunting barrels like this, it's typically modified on the right and full choke on the left. The concept is that whatever you shoot at, if you hit it on the first shot, great. If you don't, then it's probably going to run away from you or fly away from you. Thus, your second shot will be at a greater distance, so the full choke of the left barrel. Also, this feature allows you to, if you see a still target that's 25 yards away, shoot it with less choke. If you see a still target that's 50 yards away, you're going to need more choke. So you can just decide which trigger to pull. This particular shotgun has modified choke in both barrels. They don't all work the same. Okay. So when it comes to firing, let's say I see a rabbit running along. As I come up, I'll take the safety off as I come to my shoulder. And then, once I've disengaged the safety, I'll get my thumb out of the way. If I disengage the safety and then leave my thumb right there, it's right behind the action lever, and the recoil could bring that right into my thumb. That would not be fun. So, safety off, thumb out of the way. Now, when I reload, I'm going to push the action lever to the right. Remember how our barrels fell open? Watch this. They don't. Because when I opened it the first time, those internal hammers were already cocked. Now they're not. I have to push that down because it's compressing the springs to cock those hammers. Then I'm going to pull the two shells out, just let them drop. 
you got to reload quickly and I'm going to reload without looking at it. Let's say I shot that rabbit and wounded it and it ran into that bush. I want to keep my eyes on that bush because if I look down for the second it takes to put that shell in, he could run away and you'd never see him leave. However, it's winter, you have mittens on, he's in that and you're fumbling around, fumbling around. Looking down for one second to get it in there might be better than fumbling around for 10 seconds. But if possible, I want to train myself to reload without looking at the gun. Now, when I shoot again, I want to show a different technique for reloading. Now, you notice how when I push this to the side and it doesn't open and I had to push it down. One thing you can do with these is, as you open it, just shake it like that. And that can just allow gravity and inertia to open it for you. However, if you start doing that a lot, you might eventually work your action loose. Now, carry techniques for the shotgun in the field. Something you'll see a lot of people do is kind of put it in the crook of their arm. That's like an old school bird hunter way to do it. And it looks very regal as you're standing there with the binos or whatever it is you're doing. But to me, this is not a way that I'm going to get the gun into action quickly. Perhaps faster than you might think, but still not a technique I like. Some people will carry it in a high port, which is good because you can get it into action quickly. I don't like this because with those barrels up here, it blocks my peripheral vision. If you keep it down at what's sometimes called an outdoor ready, I find that this is a difficult position to maintain for very long. I'm not going to be walking out in the field like this. I've demonstrated a low ready in the past, so if, wait a minute, I thought I saw something, I'm going to get into a low ready. And there's always someone will say, what if you fell down and jammed your barrels in the mud? Well, then I guess I might have mud in my barrels and egg on my face. But that isn't really a big problem for me. However, if I'm in the field walking around like this constantly, it gets to be uncomfortable after a while. So what I'm going to do is typically carry the gun just like this. Now I know it's pointing off to whatever, but as long as I'm in a situation where that's a safe direction, I'm okay. And if it isn't, then I'll keep the barrels down lower. And an under the arm technique is something that I can maintain comfortably with the barrels pointed down in a safer direction for long periods of time. And it's very easy to bring the shotgun up quickly. So very commonly in the field like this, I think I see something, I'll come to a low ready. There it is. And then start the reloading process while keeping my eyes down range. And this reloading process with a double barrel can seem like it takes forever. And sometimes it does, but that's the technique I use. Now I want to take a moment to discuss the concept of shooting both barrels at once. And the way you do that is instead of using one trigger finger pulling the front, then the rear, use two fingers, put one on each trigger, pull them both at once. Okay. The immediate question is why would you do that? Now there might be a lot of reasons, but primarily two. One is you're standing here and you look over there and about 15 feet away, you're being charged by a lion, tiger, bear, oh my, and you want all the shot you can get right this second. That would be one reason someone might do it. Another reason is you see something sitting there that's pretty far away and getting near the limits of your maximum effective range, and you're concerned that if you shoot one shot, then another, in the time between the first and second shot, it might run away. So if you shoot both barrels and get all that shot right now, you get more shot on target. Okay, hypothetically that makes sense, but we actually have a presentation on that, and I found that shooting both barrels at once, the increase in number of pellets on target was at most minimal. It just wasn't that effective. As far as something charging you, I still think you'd be better off with two shots in rapid succession, one, two, as opposed to trying to shoot them both at once. 
The real downside of shooting both barrels is that it puts excessive pressure and strain on your firearm. You're going to work your action loose eventually. It might damage your gun, and it's certainly no fun for your shoulder. And some double-barreled, double-triggered shotguns have an internal safety system that won't let you shoot both barrels at once. You can pull both triggers, but they won't both go off. I don't recall ever having tried to shoot both barrels on this Stoger Uplander. But it has a three-inch chamber. It's made for high-pressure ammunition. What I've got in here now is low base, two and three-quarter inch, seven-eighths ounce of shot. As long as I didn't make a habit of it, shooting both barrels with this shouldn't damage the gun too much. Let's see if I can actually shoot both barrels. Did you notice that slight difference in time? They did not go off absolutely simultaneously. And I think that's because I didn't pull the triggers absolutely simultaneously. So let's try that again. And remember, when I reload, it puts the safety on for me. So I have to take it off. Well, it will let me do it to an extent, but not absolutely at the same time. We'll try one more time, and I'll see if it's me or the gun. Looks like I'm just not going to get them to go off absolutely at the same time. And somewhere along the line, I'm going to say, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional. I'm really going to emphasize, don't try this at home. It's just not something you want to do to your gun. Now, there's three more things that I want to add. And it starts with the caveat that, remember, this is an unmanned camera. You're not seeing me in real time, and I'm hundreds, maybe thousands of miles away from you. Keep that in mind. Now, as I bring the shotgun up, you'll notice that both of my eyes are open. I'm using my right eye to concentrate on the bead, and my left eye is mainly peripheral vision, but both eyes stay open. Now, the second thing is that as I bring the shotgun up to my shoulder, it's not just up here. It comes up and it comes in tight. With really heavy shot loads, you don't want that thing beating your shoulder. It's gotta be in tight. And the third thing is you have to understand that with double-barreled shotguns, shoot reload is really one word. Sometimes shoot shoot reload is one word. But as I bring the gun up and fire, I don't stand here wondering whether or not I hit what I was shooting at. I immediately go into the reloading drill and I'm looking downrange, wondering where it went or if I hit it while I'm reloading. And that about wraps it up. And as I said earlier, please remember that this was not a tutorial. This is just me demonstrating my technique for this shotgun. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Paul's Hammerless Double Barrel Shotgun Technique video.